ja. Um, and whoever joined today, like, you know, so yesterday we discussed about um, SQL architecture, right? How select query works, the basic select query uh, works. It is, this is just a high level, uh, you know, so what we have discussed yesterday, right? So let's say, for example, a client requested any query or a select query. Uh, from the client side, we have a, network card or network interface where it uh it where, where it um you know so divide the query or the request into multiple network packets right so multiple network packets we call it as a tds packet table data stream packets and then that will be sent through the network to the server right so from here the client um uh, uh, requested for select query and it's sent to the SQL server through the network packets because this is through the network we are sending a request. So that TDS packets, um, you know, so received by the SQL server network card, network interface at the SQL server side and it will unwrap the packets. One second. So it will unwrap the network packets so that the uh, query will be unwrapped, right? Once as soon as it is reached by the SQL server. Then the language event, whatever the language event that we have, right? Whatever the command that we have, it will send to the command parser, right? So command parser and client and the server listen on the same protocol let's say for example client is connected through the network uh, tcp ip server also should listen on the tcp ip so both will be a kind of handshake using the same protocol tcp ip tcp ip if it is a name pipes name pipes right so we it, it connects using the same protocol client and the server and as soon as it receives this TDS packets, then it unwraps the TDS packets at the SQL Server network interface layer, and then it sends that command uh, language event to the relational engine. So in the relational engine, so the command parser is where it checks whether the syntax is correct or not. If the syntax is correct, then it will go forward. Otherwise, it will send it back to the user, right? So with the error message, whatever. Syntactical failure error message, right? So if the syntax is correct, then it will check further check this algebraizer. Algebraizer is nothing but uh, the schema binding, basically, right? So you have this DBO schema and you have uh, anything you can come consider that HR schema, right? So these two are different, right? DBO.people. And HR, HR dot people, right? So both are two different tables. So it will identify the schema binding, right? If you execute this, what is the uh, result set that you get? It You will see different result set by executing this because these two are different tables altogether. So that binding, it will validate here in the command parser itself. Then in the command parser, whatever the query that we received, it generates the hash, right? It, it follows the hashing algorithm and it generates the hash of the query, right? SQL text hash, it will generate. Then with the help of that hash, it will check whether the plan is available in the memory or not, right? Um, the In the plan is available in the memory or not, right? So plan, if if plan is existing plan is nothing but a pre compile i mean plan is nothing but a compiled plan uh, generated by the optimizer right so for the reuse and this plan cache is in the memory uh, memory storage engine so it will check whether the plan is existing or not so that it can reutilize if the plan is available then the it will go for query execution it will skip this optimization part part right if the command parser identifies the plan is available then it will go ahead and 
<clears throat> pick the plan and send it to the query executor to execute the query. This plan will have this uh, handle, all right? So, or the hash value, the query hash and SQL hash, or I mean SQL hash and plan hash you will have so that it is easy for searching the plan based on the query hash that we have, uh, that command parser is generated. Now, the plan is not exist in the memory. So what will happen? It will send it to the command uh, query optimizer. Query optimizer, uh, uh, if the plan is not available, it generates a query tree. Query tree is nothing but, it's a uh, divide the query into multiple, uh, you know, so uh, kind of pieces. Let's say you can consider that if you execute a complex query, and generating a plan is difficult. Instead, if you divide that into multiple operations, let's say for example, uh, joins, and uh, you see that constraint, based on the constraints, based on conditions, right? So based on what operation or what, what actual it performs, so based on that, if you divide that into the query uh, as a query tree, right? So let's say for example, this is your select query. And you divide this into a, different segments, different pieces, all right? So then it is easy for, easy to operate, right, individually instead of uh, executing or generating com combinedly, right? So in, instead of working on the complete uh, query, so it is generating, I mean, it is working internally to divide this query into multiple pieces so that it will process faster. <laughs> Again, generating a plan, it will not generate for individual um, segment or individual piece, right? It generates for the entire plan. Right? The query tree will be sent to the query optimizer and query optimizer is a cost-based optimization. So what does it mean by cost-based optimization? It checks what is the cost of the, um, you know, so query, right? Based on the cost, while it is generating the plan, it checks the cost. And as soon as it reaches a specific cost and it will terminate and generate a plan for that, right? For example, let's say <clears throat> if it is a simple query. So if it is a simple query, it, it is considered as a trivial plan and it will, it will, um, you know, so, uh, skip the any skip any optimization right it will not go for further full optimization because it is considered as a trivial or a simple execution and the plan will be generated the trivial plan will be generated right so if it is so there are different phases right phase zero it is considered as a pre-optimization phase phase one it is checking like if there is any um so indexes or any uh, joins that we have, right? So these are all will be considered. And if it detects the cost of this execution is less than one, right? So if the cost is reached to the one, right? One is nothing but it's just a cost. It doesn't have any uh, units to consider, right? So for example, let's say you have a cost threshold for parallelism. I mean, I don't know how many of you heard. Uh, we will talk that later. So that is that is same, right? So it will identify if the cost is this, then it will terminate. Uh, I mean, it will it will um, stop further optimization and generate a plan. Consider that it is the better plan at this point to proceed with, right? It will not keep searching for the good plan. If it is keep searching for the good plan, then the time it takes to search for the plan might be taking longer than executing executing the plan, right? Phase two. So in phase two, it checks like whether uh, I can utilize the, uh, what we call uh, parallelism, or I can have this some uh, views, right? Index views or any other uh, full optimized queries, right? So it, it, it is checking the full optimization, parallelism, indexes, indexed views, and all it will validate in the phase two, right? Once that is generated, once the phase, um, once the optimization is completed, it generates a plan for our query to execute. This plan will be then cached in the plan cache, right? So whatever plan it is generated by the optimizer, it will be cached in the memory or the plan cache 
for the later uses, right? So whenever we request, then this plan can be utilized. Then the plan will be sent to the query executor to execute the query. The query executor, while executing, it needs certain data. So let's say um, it reads, it needs around 100 records, 100 rows, right? If it requires 100 rows, and let's say it is fit into 10 pages, because whatever data we are processing, it is all processed using the pages, right? So even if you give this 100 records, we, we require the minimum granularity level that SQL Server reads are the pages. Let's say, for example, uh, you require 10 pages to read. That request will be sent here and access method receives the request from the relational engine, right? So there is a communicator. Query executor requests data, right? So how, how many rows is request? Like 100 rows to read. Then it will send that request to the storage engine because storage engine where we have stored the data. And how this these two will be communicated, our relational engine storage will be engine will be connected using the OLEDB provider. It is just a driver you can consider where it communicates between these two. Right? So relational engine storage engine will be communicated through OLEDB provider. And query executor send the request to access method. So in the storage engine, access method is where it receives the request from the query engine and it pass that information. It pass this information to the buffer manager to get the data, right? So buffer manager is one which know whether the page is available in the memory or not, right? So buffer manager first what it checks, it will connect to the data cache. That is your buffer pool where we store the data pages, right? So data cache and check whether the page is available. Whatever pages I require are available in the memory or not. If the pages are available, then it creates a result set and send it back to the query executor through access method. Let's say if the pages are not available in the memory, these pages are not available in the memory, then the buffer manager will send a request to the disk that is your data file. Right, so it, it it performs an I/O operation and it sends a request to the disk, and it 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 checks like you know I need these pages and I require these pages to be to satisfy this query. So then data file whatever pages it will send those pages and buffer manager keep that pages right. It will not generate a result set from here right before generating the result what buffer manager does it will place these 10 pages into the memory at any point of time the first place like how we get the data it has to have the pages available in the memory right if the pages are not available in the memory none of the operations would be performed i mean so uh, from the disk cannot directly operate if the pages are not available in the memory it will get the pages and keep it in the memory, right? So once the pages are available in the data cache and the result set will be send it back to the query executor through access method. And query executor send the result set to SNI uh, network interface code at the server level. And here the server side network interface, it will convert or again, it will be divide that into multiple pieces, right? Multiple TDS packets because it has to send through the network. Network doesn't understand the result set, right? So network, it will create the TDS packet and it will send it to the client. And client side, it receives the SNI, server network interface you will have at the client level as well, right? That receives that network interface and it will unwrap the TDS packets and generate a result set there at the client side. So that is how the select query works, right? So that is the high level that we discussed yesterday, right? So these are all things that we discussed, right? So if it is zero cost and it is considered as a trivial, if not, it will go for further optimization.
right? So hope this is clear, right? So I will proceed with um, any DML operations that we have, right? So how the DML uh, perform, right? So if you consider the difference between these two, right? Here access method, it will directly go to the buffer manager and request for the data page. Here, this is the select statement. So only the select statement, you don't have any, um, you know, so log file or anything because we don't write anything into the transactional log file if it is just a select query, right? If it is just select query, we don't write anything into the transaction log file. But here, if you see the transaction log file is there and here you will have this data file as well. Just, just for simplicity, like we haven't specified the data file and you'll have the data file and the same communication you still have, right? So this is there, let's consider this, right? So until this access method, the request is same, right? So whatever that we already discussed until this access method, let's say you, you have a simple update query. update table set id equal to 100 or something where um, name equal to abc some something we are just you know so updating the data if i want to update right so now what will happen so this one until this request is same, right? It will check for the plan exists or not. If the plan is not available, then generate a query tree. And it, the, based on that, it will go for optimization and it will check whether the indexes are available, joins are there. And uh, if the cost is more than one or cost is defined, uh, I mean, so what is the cost and if it go for parallel execution. So all same, right? So in the query optimization. Once this generates a plan, plan will be cached and it will be sending that plan to the query executor to execute and the query executor will send a request to the access method to process further, right? So now the access method, so now the access method, it will not immediately connect to the buffer manager to fetch the data. Right, so it will not connect immediately to the buffer manager to update the data or get the pages. Right, what it does, you have something called two comp two things you will have here. So you have something called lock manager. I mean, this is just I'm writing here, uh, but you will have this lock manager even in the select, right? So select also requires some uh, concurrency or locking, right? So shared locks, we will talk that later. But here you will have this locks even in the select uh, query, right? So here I am adding this because in the any DML operation, this is a major role because it, if you uh, process any request, it requires an exclusive lock of the data, of the transaction, right? Uh, anyway, like, you know, so it, it does, like it needs to modify the data. So what it does actually, so it generates a series of transactions. It generates a series of transactions, right? So to, ex uh, to execute the query, it generates a series of transactions and it will acquire a, exclusive lock on the particular transaction, right? So while generating a lock, it acquires a exclusive lock. At the same time, the lock manager will take care of the locking. At the same time, log manager, that is your transaction manager, has to write that logs into the transaction log file to make sure that data is durable, right? So this is what we call it as a durability. Right. So this is just a high level. I'll tell you in a bit um, what exactly and how exactly it write into the transaction log file. The high level, whatever the request that we receive to update, that will have to update 
in the transaction log file first. And as soon as it is written to the transaction log file, that is where we consider it as a write ahead logging. Right, we have something called write ahead logging. It will write into the transaction log file first before even writing the data into the pages. Right, data file. Right, so it will write into the transaction log file at the same time. The buffer manager will update the pages in the cache. Right, so at the same time, the buff, uh, the uh, access method through the access method, the buffer manager will update the data pages in the memory and marking these pages as dirty. Right, so marking these pages as dirty pages, right? So here, whatever we discuss, right? So access method, so it generates a series of logs. Okay, let me explain here. So what will happen? Uh, let's consider this is your memory where we uh, process your update query and how that happens, right? First, it let's say you, you are updating a transaction. So as soon as you update a transaction, so it generates a series of transaction logs, right? So first, what it will does, you'll have something called log cache or log buffer in the memory, right? So in the log cache, it will write these transaction information here into the log cache, right? So the size is very, but I, th I think like, you know, so the size is around 64 KB of data, right? So 64 KB of data. So there are certain conditions, the logs will be flushed from the log cache to the transactional log file. This is your log file, LDF file. Right? So what are the conditions it will flush? Right? One, uh, okay, one sec. Okay, so first one, right? If the log buffer or log cache is full. So if the log cache is full, there is a writer thread. So there is something called log writer thread. It will write the log cache information into the transaction log file. So right, as soon as it is full, it will send that log information to the transaction log file. Otherwise, if the transaction is log cache is not full, the 64 KB is not full. If the log is committed, I mean, sorry, transaction is committed. Right? If the transaction is committed with respect to whether the log cache size is reached or not, the logs will be sent it to the transactional log file. So third one, if checkpoint triggered. So if I will talk about the checkpoint, if the checkpoint is triggered, whatever data which is available in the log cache, it will be flushed to the transactional log file, right? It will be flushed to the transactional log file. So these are a few conditions, right? So like a few other, for example, for example, uh, SQL is restarted or suppose let's say backup happened. So even if you execute a backup command that executes checkpoint in backend, right? So if you execute a backup, it executes a checkpoint and that will flushes the dead log cache to the log file, transaction log file, right? So or um, restarted backup or failover happens, right? So if there is a failover happens, it makes sure that the data is return to the transaction log file, right? So these are all will happen if law, uh, the reason the log cache will be flushed to the transaction log file. Why we need the data to be available in the transaction log file for recovery, right? So we need to recover the data. 
from how the data will be recovered. I'm not going into the recovery phases and all, but how the data will be recovered from the last checkpoint, right? The data, be, data will be recovered from the last checkpoint. The reason, as soon as the checkpoint happens, the logs will be flushed from the log cache to the transaction log file, and it is marking as a checkpoint LSM. Right, so that whenever the recovery is started, it starts from the last or recent checkpoint from the transaction log file. Right, so these are all it will write to the transaction LDF file. Right, um, that is where that you have something called log writer thread. log writer so log writer is responsibility is to write the transactional logs from the log cache to the ldf file right so to the ldf file suppose let's say you have a huge data and you are keep flushing into the transaction log file right so that is where you might see a wait type called write log Right. So we'll we'll talk about the wait types later uh, detail. But here, just to understand, if you perform uh, any huge transactions and that will write into the transaction log file, and if it is a huge data is written, then you will see this write log wait types. Right. So that is where uh, we write into the transaction log file. But why we require to write into the transaction log file first? I'll clear this everything, right? So whatever transactions, whatever modifications that we that we are doing, it will make sure that transactional log has the information before even writing into the data file, right? The reason if there is any crash happens and it the log file responsibility is to recover the data without any data loss, right? So that is the reason we write first into the transaction log file. So the concept of write ahead logging. So write ahead logging, sorry. Well, write ahead logging is nothing but writing into the transaction log file before actually writing the data into the data file, right? So the pages into the data file. Now, <clears throat> so I have uh, written the data uh, pages to uh, written the transaction logs information to the transaction log file. At the same time, the modifications I perform, right? So the number of pages or whatever the modification that I perform, it will write into the data cache, right? It will write into the data cache. If the pages are not available to write into the data cache, this buffer manager, the same concept. It will pull pages from the disk and it will hold, put the pages in the memory and it will update the pages and marking these pages as dirty. Right, so marking these pages as dirty. So as soon as the commit is completed, right? So as soon as the transaction commit happens, then the transaction log it will write the commit lesson as well, and whatever the logs that are acquired by the log manager, the logs will be released to process. Right, so the logs will be released. Right, so this is how the typical any DML operation works. It can be anything, even insert, update, delete, anything it matters. So the same behavior, right? It generates a series of logs and it will keep in the memory uh, until the log writer is flushes the logs into the transactional log file. So as soon as it is written to the transaction log file, the log buffer or log cache will be cleared, right? So whatever the log cache we have, it will be cleared. At the same time, it will the buffer manager checks if the pages are available in the memory. If the pages are available, then it's fine. So otherwise, it, uh, it if the pages are not available in the cache, and the buffer manager will pull the pages from the disk and keep it in the memory and update the pages. That is what we call it as a dirty pages, right? So that is nothing but 
<clears throat> so whatever that t, that t pace is nothing but the pace is modified. So you have a different page here, right? So different page or different value here in the uh, data or the memory than the disk, right? We call it as a dirty, right? Dirty page is nothing but whatever page that we have in the memory is not the same as data file, right? So that is what we call it as a dirty page. When this page will be considered uh, marking as clean page, right? When this dirty page is marking as clean page is if the page is same from the memory and the data file. If the page is same, then we consider it as a clean page. Page is same in memory and data file, right? So memory is again, it is a buffer uh, data cache. So data cache and uh, where we have the, right. So when this uh, considered as a clean, right? So when this will happen, so when the page in the memory and the page in the data file, um, you know, so matches if there is a checkpoint. So if there is a checkpoint, let's say there is a checkpoint triggered, whatever we have in the data file, uh, sorry, in the memory. So those pages will be pushed to the data file, right? So checkpoint again, uh, remember like it will not remove or it will not uh, release the pages from the memory. It will just, you can consider that as a copy, right? So as a copy and paste it in the data file, the same way it will not remove the pages it will keep the pages in the memory as well and it will flush those pages to the data file so that the pages are available in the memory for any other operations right so for example let's say you are executing another update and it requires the same pages then it uses the data cache it uses the memory itself rather than uh, requesting those pages from the disk <clears throat> Right. Rather than requesting those pages from the mem from the data file, it will uses the pages from the disk it's, uh, memory itself. Right. The checkpoint. Checkpoint responsibility is to flush the pages from the data uh, uh, from the memory to the data file. And once the pages are both same, like it is considered the bit will be clear whatever the dirty page bit so every page will have um, a bit bit is nothing but either zero or one if it is a one it is a dirty if it is a zero it is a clean right so it will clear the bit right so either it will be uh, marking this as dirty or marking this as a clean so as soon as the checkpoint happens the pages are uh, flushed to the data file and it is considered as clean page, right? Um, now, can anyone tell me like about the checkpoint in a high level? If you if you are aware, just wanted to see like you know. So what is the uh, what what is our understanding in check uh, checkpoint? So. Uh I'm understanding checkpoint um, forces data to be written to disk, mm. depending at um, what level the checkpoint is occurring. Um, following what you have explained, a uh, checkpoint will occur when the, um, it will occur, for example, when probably we take a backup, I think it's full backup, mm -hmm. and checkpoint will occur. Mm -hmm. Checkpoint will also occur when uh, the data the data the, the data page is like um, full or when transactions are committed checkpoint will also occur so checkpoint and when checkpoint occurs it causes the log writer to go ahead and write um, data pages to and flush uh, 
pages disk or data to disk on yeah correct that is cool that is that is correct right so when the checkpoint happens that is absolutely correct whatever you mentioned let's consider a scenario right so let's take um okay so let's take a transaction um t1 right so let's consider that t1 is um execute started at uh 10 a.m so if the 10 a.m a transaction is started and there are some modifications right so i'm talking about only the modification because the checkpoint um i mean it it considers a dirty only if there is a dml operation right so transaction one it started at 10 a.m and transaction two started at um 11 a.m let's say right so these two are the two transactions that i have and i'm executing and transaction one committed it um you can consider 11 30 a.m right so transaction one is committed at 11 30 am now transaction 2 is not committed at right so transaction 1 is committed at 11 30 am transaction 2 is not at committed so currently let's consider that it is at 12 am uh, sorry 12 pm there is a checkpoint happens i mean checkpoint happens every frequent uh, let's just, just for uh, example i'm taking that as 12 pm checkpoint happens now these are all dirty right so now can anyone tell me like what transaction data i will write uh using the checkpoint right so you mentioned the checkpoint will be flushes the pages from the memory to the data file right so now i have two transactions one transaction started at 10 and uh, committed at 11 30 and the transaction started at 11 is not at committed so if checkpoint happens at maybe 12 pm or even 11 31 am it doesn't matter like you know so i'm just executing i'm just taking an example as 12 pm the checkpoint has uh, occurred right so what data and how, how how that what data it will write into the data file or the what data it will write by the checkpoint it will write the a committed actions at 11 30. the 11:30 committed so 11 30 committed it will write right so what do you mean by 11 30 committed as in like the transaction one only it will write or even 11 30 we have transaction two also because the transaction trans two is not committed so that's a dirty and un uncommitted transaction right mm -hmm. Hmm. So maybe the lazy writer will write it to the disk. Lazy writer, yeah. So we'll we'll come to the okay. Um, oh, okay. So we'll come to if the lazy writer. Yes, ah. if I'm committed transaction. Uh, hmm. my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong, but hmm. if it's committed, a uh, checkpoint will write from memory to disk but if i'm committed transaction which is a dirty page hmm. lazy writer will move them to the disk i might be wrong but i'm, I'm just trying to try okay uh, um okay yeah uh, no th th there is no there is no wrong in that right like so yeah you are um uh, correct but there is some a small um you know so difference but yeah anyone else wanted to try so i will come to lazy writer uh in a bit but any anyone wanted to try in this uh checkpoint and thanks like you're 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 correct right so uh, whatever you mentioned that is correct but again like even the checkpoint there is a little small uh, difference right so i just wanted to uh make sure that our understanding is like whatever like our understanding is correct or not so so now, all agree with that. Uh -huh. Yeah, based on what you have explained, a checkpoint, mm. um, data pages will be written to this. Mm. So uh, both committed and uncommitted transactions will be written to this at checkpoint because if the 
the the T one which occurred at eleven thirty a.m. Mm. is already committed, so it doesn't need checkpoint to be written to this, right? Mm. It should be written to this even if checkpoint does not occur. But when, once checkpoint occurs, the two pages, including the transaction that was uncommitted, will also be written to this. Mm. So you mean, uh, let's say it is your data cache, right? So uh, I just wanted to make sure that what I am talking, right? So it is a data cache and you will have this uh, pages available, right? So pages, let's say, for example, uh, different pages, right? So P0, P1, P2, these are the pages. Now, uh, let's say, I'll just make sure P0 and P1 is dotted using the transaction one. T1 and T1. Now P2, right? So P2 is dotted by T2, transaction two, right? So P0, like page one, page zero, page one, like there are three pages in the memory and first two pages are dotted by T1. I mean, modified by the T1 transaction, P2. Page two is modified by the T2. Now, the T2 transaction, the P2, whatever the transaction that we are executing is not committed. So P1, P2, or P0, P1 are committed. So based on your, uh, is it like, uh, what is your name? Like, sorry, Arnold? Yes. Arnold. Okay, sure, cool. So uh, like, what is your statement here? Like, so you mean that three pages will be flushed to the data file? Or two or one or like what is your uh, statement but you mentioned that is correct but just wanted to make sure that whatever whatever we are discussing is or whatever you mentioned is um, correct right so here like three pages and how many pages will be flushed to the disk if checkpoint happens in committed transactions it's expected to be flushed to pages what pages a P T P two, which is P, you said P two is committed, right? But no, P two is P0, not committed. P one is not committed. P one P zero P one are committed. Correct. So at checkpoint, those transactions will be flushed, and the uncommitted transactions, uh, I'm not very sure, but should be rolled back. So again, like I'm not talking about the transaction. I'm talking about the modified pages by oh. this transaction. Okay. Right. So modified pages by the transaction. Right, so the pages are modified with this transaction commit or uncommit, whatever. But uh, you you mentioned some other statement before, right? So before I would draw this, right? What was that? Yeah, no, I was saying that hmm. at checkpoint, what I was trying to explain is based on the pre previous explanations, hmm. at checkpoint, data pages would be up to this. Exactly. Hmm. So data pages are pages that have been modified. Maybe we did some kind of updates. Correct. A table and then that page becomes dirty mm. because that information is not found on in disk at that time correct so that page is dirty so at checkpoint that modified information will be flushed mm. correct. yes so yeah so that's what i was trying to explain no you're, you're clear with the statement right like so now you tell me like how many pages will be flushed so are they modifying the same information those the dirty pages where they modifying the same information mm. at the same time, because I think that will also um, depend. If they are modifying the same data, maybe two transactions, they, mm. because this is two different transactions. Mm. Mm. They are trying to modify the same the same information. No, no, no. Uh, leave that like same information or different ah, okay. because anyway, like we have a different pages here, right? So P0, P1 mm -hmm. are different pages and P2 is different pages, right? So Okay, so anyone wanted it's a little to... tricky. I'll leave it at the point. <laughs> so no, no, no. You you're correct, right? So maybe little confusion, but you are, uh, you came to the point, right? But but I think yeah. like there is some little uh confusion around, right? So uh, right, it, right, yeah, yeah, definitely. Your your point is absolutely correct, but only little confusion. So anyone wanted to clear or anyone wanted to give a try. Hi, Chen. 
Yeah. Uh, all the three pages will be uh, commit. I mean, flushed uh, mm. to that. Mm. Okay. Uh, to the LDF. Mm -hmm. Any any reason like you wanted to give LDF? Yeah. W what do you mean by LDF? Again, <laughs> you are telling the answer like you are giving uh, different uh, uh, things, right? So what LDF? LDS, you will not have the pages, right? So your LDF, you will no, have... Not, sorry, sorry uh, not LDF, uh, transaction log. Ah, that's what, right? So LDF is nothing but your transaction log. Why pages yeah. will be flushed to the transaction log? The uh, one... Uh, what are the change? Uh, what are the changes having having to the <clears throat> uh, transaction that will be moved to the uh, LDF, right? What are the Whatever tra transactions, it will be okay. This is the data cache, right? Yeah. So data cache, you will have only the data pages, yes. and you have some other memory area called a log cache. Oh. Log cache. Right. So log cache, I mentioned that the size of the log cache is around 64 KB. For example, the max size, whatever modifications that you are performing, T1, T2, T3, whatever transaction that we perform, it will keep writing into the log cache. Log cache. The reason it will write into the log cache is every small transaction or every small uh, byte, it, it should not write keep writing into the data file, uh, sorry, keep writing into the disk. That is your log file. LDF file is stored in the disk. If you do that, keep writing into the log file, you will have more IO operations. It is an expensive. For that reason, we all store that information into the log cache and it will write periodically into the transaction log file. So when it will write, is one I mentioned, right? So a few things. One is if there is a checkpoint happens, I'm talking checkpoint for the log cache. The logs will be written to the transaction log file if there is a checkpoint happens. Second thing, if the transaction is committed, if I mention this statement second, I mentioned this transaction is committed. So first point is even if the transaction is committed or uncommitted, the logs will be written to the transaction log file. Second one, the logs are committed, the transaction is committed, then immediately it will write into the transaction log file, even if the cache is not full, right? Third one, uh, I mentioned, right? So let's say, for example, uh, you restarted or there is a database restart, there is a crash happen. So all these scenarios, it will write into the transaction log file. So I'm talking this is different. So this is the log file, it will write into the transaction log file. Now, with these transactions, the data cache pages also modified. So data pages also modified, right? So let's say I have three pages here, T1, T2, three, uh, P1, P2, P0, P1, P2, three pages modified by three, these two transactions. Here, P0, P1 are committed transactions, right? Whatever the pages which are from the committed transaction, P2 is the uncommitted transaction page. The page which is there, the transaction is not yet committed, but it is dotted. And there is a checkpoint happens. Checkpoint does two things. Okay, for your information, checkpoint does two things. One, it will flush the log cache to the log file, LDF file. Second thing, first thing it will does log cache so that it will make sure whatever data that we are processing, it is persisted into the transaction log file. Why we required? For the recovery purpose, we required the log file to be updated, right? So for that reason, we have something called write ahead logging and all, right? So if there is a check checkpoint happens, it will make sure the data is written to the transaction log file. Second thing, checkpoint, hap checkpoint occurs, it will flushes Pages, dirty pages, you can consider that. Dirty pages to the disk. Yes. That is your data file. If you understand the, if you read the lines, right? So in between uh, whatever, like, you know, so I am never mentioned that it will write in the committed transaction pages, right? I am just using the dirty pages. So what does it mean, right? So dirty pages with respect to whether the transaction is committed or uncommitted, 
that pages are marked as dirty will be flushed to the data file, right? Even if the transaction is committed or uncommitted, doesn't matter. If there is a page, if there is a um, checkpoint happens, and if it detects there are pages are dirty in the uh, data cache, it will flush those pages to the data file. So flush again, it is a copy, not the remove. So you have two differences. One is copy, second one is cut. Cut and paste, copy and paste, right? So you, I mean, just for your understanding, I'm using these words. Don't use when you're talking in the interview or something, right? So copy is basically you are just keeping the pages on the source and moving the pages to the destination. Source here is data cache. You will copy the pages so that the pages will be available here and you will place those pages into the data file. Right, so those pages in the data file, right? So those pages will be moved from buffer pool to the data file so that it will be marking the bit will be cleared and marking this bit as zero so that it will be clear, considered as clean page, right? Sorry. Right, that is what uh, I was trying to explain right so and you are correct right whatever you mentioned is correct like there is some 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 like we are flushing every page whatever there in the memory right if there is a checkpoint happens right so either the transaction is committed or uncommitted doesn't matter right so that is the checkpoint right so how frequently that all depends right so normal there are different types of checkpoints as I said, like internal checkpoint, right? So internal checkpoint is um, some some operations, right? For example, let's say uh, backup and SQL restarted, right? So or failover happens, right? So or you created a snapshot of the database, right? Even snapshot uh, to update the current uh, in the data in the snapshot, it acquires a I mean, it executes a checkpoint in backend. That is what internal checkpoint is, right? So automatic checkpoint, or uh, you have something called manual checkpoint, right? Uh, you have something called manual checkpoint as well, right? So you can execute just a checkpoint command in the SQL server that will work, right? So suppose if I execute checkpoint, it works, right? You can execute the manual checkpoint as well. Or if there is there is something called indirect checkpoint and starting from 2012, um, you know, so recovery interval, target recovery time. So you have some configuration in the SP underscore configure. And if you set that recovery interval, right? So if this if you set recovery interval, so it will make sure that database is recovered whatever time that we defined, right? For example, by default, it is a 60 seconds. And SQL engine, it will make sure the database should be recovered in 60 seconds. So how soon the database is recovered is depending on how frequently we are executing checkpoint, right? How frequently we execute checkpoint. The reason, right? I'm If I'm going back to the log file architecture or log file, like how the recovery happens, the recovery happens based on the last checkpoint. Let's say the checkpoint, this is the log file. Let's consider that. And here one checkpoint, let's say, uh, if here another checkpoint happens, right? So there is a gap in between. And if there is a crash or something happened in between or here, let's say there is a crash happens here before the checkpoint trigger, then how the data will be recovered. So this has to go all the way back to this particular checkpoint to identify what are the modifications, whatever the uncommitted, everything it has to identify to recover the data. So that is the reason it might be late if the checkpoint is long enough, right? If the checkpoint is longer. For that, we have something called indirect checkpoint. So that will fasten the recovery but that can increase the latency of IO operation because every frequently it is executing checkpoint. Every one minute, uh, 
like instead of one minute every 10 seconds or 15 seconds based on number of pages it will be calculated and keep executing checkpoint that can also degrade the performance right so some sometimes like we'll have to uh, understand like if there is a checkpoint if there is a need of enabling indirect checkpoint and all right so i'm not going into right so there are some automatic checkpoint like every one sec one minute the checkpoint happens so that it will check whatever dirty pages uh, what are the modifications which are there in the log cache and whatever the modifi modified pages which are there in the data cache it will write into the data file right so that is the like uh, maybe uh, you can consider that internal or overall a uh, high level of the checkpoint that we have in SQL Server. So any questions on this or is it clear? Uh, you don't agree. It's, I think it's clear from my part, but I do have a question. Sure. Yeah, so I do understand that the log writer writes um data pages, so it flushes the data to to the um log file. Mm. And so my question is what process or what background process flushes the data to the um from the data cache to the data file or disk? Yeah. No, so this this is the process, right? Checkpoint only uh, thing it will write the pages to the data cache. If okay. it is always on, that is a different story. If it is uh, always on or database mirroring, or um, you know, so uh, if any uh, log shipping secondaries, right? So if that is the secondary server, that is a different story. We have something called redo thread. Okay right so uh, redo thread it will take care of reading reapplying those pages to the data file but here we don't have this concept on the primary the reason we are flushing the pages by using the checkpoint right checkpoint will make sure updating the data pages from the memory to the data file right so it, we are updating here right so by using the checkpoint process that is the background process it will write all the pages to the data file that is the only process that we have. Well, yeah. I mean, that is that is the checkpoint. We have something called lazy writer. I'm going to. I, I'll come to that point. But any questions on this uh, checkpoint or any 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 clarification or anything? Okay. So, at what point will um will checkpoints occur? Because uh, you have explained for the uh, log files, writing data to the log files, we saw three different, about four different points where um, data flushed to the log file. But here, when it's being flushed to, at what point will checkpoint occur? What are the things that will trigger checkpoint? Mm, no, I, I, I didn't understand your question. So what was that? Yeah, so, what are it, what can cause threat from checkpoint to at what point will checkpoint occur? Mm -hmm. At what time? Let's say um, what will cause checkpoint to occur? I, I understand that you said I think for every sixty seconds or so mm -hmm. internally checkpoint checkpoints occur, right? Mm -hmm. But is there anything else that can trigger check, checkpoint to occur? Yeah, yeah. So uh, within before that time. Correct. So it. Checkpoint happens, right? Let's say, as I said, right? Um, for example, some internal operations, let's say uh, backup or any any failure event. So those are the things that it happens, that checkpoint, right? So any any snapshot is created or backup is created or failover or reset happens. So these are the some internal things that it will trigger the checkpoint. But okay. other than that, like, so uh, no other reason that it will frequently uh, run the checkpoint like for example you have created indirect checkpoint indirect checkpoint might be faster like every very frequent it is not even waiting for 60 seconds to execute the checkpoint so it will be right so even if there is no indirect checkpoint there are some other events right for example as i mentioned right failure happens or the backup backup has taken or the <clears throat> or the failover restart or the database is crashed or database is restarted or snapshot created. Those are all some internal operations. It executes the checkpoint. 
but yeah even you can execute that manual uh, checkpoint that i mentioned right so suppose if you uh, see that um let's say for example I mean that that there is an internal calculation as well, right? How frequently the checkpoint happens. There are some modifications, uh, percentage also. Like so for example, I think ten percent modifications or something, it will flush the checkpoint, right? For example, yeah. Suppose if it is a simple recovery or whatever it is, and also log file is full, uh, seventy percent, right? So if the log file is full, I think it is simple or even full, I believe. Uh, if the log file is full um 70 percent then there is a checkpoint triggers and it will make sure that it will write it it, it writes the data into the transaction log file and if there is no modifications right so as i said right 10 percent i don't remember like if that is some internals uh 10 percent or something suppose if there is no modification the checkpoint would not even affect if that is the case you might see that uh, the log file is full because the checkpoint, uh, if you see that log is weight description or whatever, the log file full reason for log file full, you might see, um, you know, so it is waiting for checkpoint. I mean, if that is the case, you can just uh, manually execute the checkpoint. That is very rare. I have seen one or two times like it was waiting for checkpoint to trigger. And if that is the case, then we can we can manually execute the checkpoint so that it will flush the logs to the data file and it will clear the um, mark, right? Whatever the log is with description, it happened. I mean, that is just a, uh, your understanding. Suppose if it is waiting, we can we can go ahead and do it manually. But this is one of the scenario, right? If the log file is full 70% uh, with respect to, it will not wait for the time to execute checkpoint. It will execute immediately as soon as it detects the log is full by 70%. Thank so, you. Sure. These are the things it happens. Now, um, coming to the lazy writer, right? So lazy writer. Um, so uh, I don't. I cannot call your name. Is it call us? Uh, what 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 I call? <laughs> Sorry for that. You can, you can call me with the Lawit or call us is fine. Also, my last name. Thanks. Um. Yeah. You mentioned the lazy writer, right? So is it clear? Like a checkpoint. With respect to the transaction is committed or uncommitted, it will flush to the data file. Yes, but, it's it, it's cool. clear what when you explain it. Cool. But Thanks. my understanding was mm. uh, like dirty page are being modified in the memory. I thought lazy writer writes that back mm. to the disk to free up subspace and buffer catch. Yeah. So, it, like to thought... have a space for a new page. Exactly. So that was my understanding. Yeah. No, no, your understanding is absolutely correct, right? So lazy writer work is that. But when this lazy writer executes uh, is what we need to understand, right? So lazy writer work is what you mentioned, like it will remove the pages from the data file, or sorry, data cache, so that it will free up the pages or free up the memory for the new trans, new pages to accommodate, right? So, but when that happens is matter. So anyone wanted to give a try? Or do you want to uh, give a try? Um, anybody should be fine. What is lazy writer? Okay. No problem. So lazy writer is invoke right so there is no frequency i mean so it will definitely ex it checks that frequency but there is no frequency that lazy writer triggers in uh one minute or two minutes there is no frequency lazy writer keep monitoring about your memory right so keep monitoring about memory and if there is any memory pressures right for example let's say there is a internal memory pressure that is within the SQL server or an external memory pressure. External memory pressure is nothing but your operating system doesn't have enough memory to process the request. Then it will send a notification to the uh, different processors in that computer. Let's say your operating system, uh, it has, um, so I'll, I'll talk this detail in the memory. So for your understanding, um, sorry. This is your computer, for example. It has multiple process. Process is nothing but programs, whatever you call it as, applications. So this is your SQL Server. 
this is your PowerShell. Let's see. Just taking. This is your notepad. <clears throat> or some other Power BI. Let's say I'll take the uh, some big application Power BI, right? So you are executing some Power BI reports and it requires more memory and which it is using more memory and operating system is doesn't have enough memory to process their operations or the request. And operating system send notification to every application and stating that cut down memory or re release the memory. In the SQL server, what is the highest memory consumer is your data cache because it has to store the data pages, right? It has to cache that data pages. So then who is managing that releasing memory and all will be your lazy writer, right? Lazy writer responsibility is to respond for the request, any memory request, right? Either it is an internal, as I mentioned that internal is nothing, but let's say you're executing some huge queries that requires more memory. And if it requires more memory to process that, it has to remove the, or it has to clear the pages from the memory or the buffer pool or the data cache you can consider, right? So who will respond to that request is your lazy writer. Lazy writer will re respond to the memory pressure or request, um, you know, so memory, memory pressure request or respond to the uh, request, either it is an external or internal, and it will re release the pages or remove the pages from the buffer pool or the data of cache, right? On what basis it will remove is, we all know it is an LRU algorithm, least recently used algorithm, right? So it calculates based on the number of modified page, I mean, ba sorry, based on number of pages that I have in the memory. And it will also calculate internally the uh, free pages, right? So available free pages in the memory. If it doesn't have available free pages, so it calculates the number of free pages. And if it doesn't have, then whatever uh, LRU least recently used, if the pages are not recently used, right? So those pages will be removed from the disk. Sorry, this removed from the memory. That is your data cache, okay? okay. So lazy writer responsibility is only to, so lazy writer responsibility is only to respond for a memory pressure and if there is any memory pressure and it will clear the pages from the data file uh, from the memory data cache to the data file right so here what happens it will be cut and paste cut and paste is nothing but um, it will remove the pages from the memory and it will be pasted in the data cache or uh, sorry data file Right. So checkpoint is copy. Right. So copy. We are keeping both copies in memory and the data file. We are not removing the pages. But in the uh, uh, creative writer, it will remove the pages so that it will clear the memory to release some space. Right. So it clears the memory to accommodate new pages or release the pages to allocate, um, you know, so release the, it cut down the memory and it will release to the operating system or release to the other other processes. Lazy writer also does one more thing, right? So as I mentioned, right? So it checks the memory pressure. I mean, it responds to the memory uh, pressure. Let's say, um, let's say, <clears throat> as I said, right? So internal, there are some queries executing. Let's say it is a select, huge select query. Select query. Uh, it requires 10 GB of memory, let's say. And I have allocated max memory is um, around 13 GB. And buffer pool consumption, that is your um, data cache for the pages or 7 GB. Let's take example.
let's take this example. Now, this alert query requires times ED. Max memory that we allocated is 13 gigs and the data cache is 7 gigs, right? right? So based on this, what we required is for this process, I require 10 GB plus 7 GB. Now, what happens? It requires 10 GB to execute, right? So that is the execution memory. It requires 10 GB. Otherwise, the query will never execute. For that reason, lazy writer responds to this memory and remove the pages. Remove the pages from the data cache and release that memory to this operation to proceed with, right? As soon as this operation is completed, the select query is completed, it is the execution memory, right? As soon as the query is completed, the memory will be released. So as soon as it is released, lazy writer understands, okay, there is enough memory to grow, right? So it will keep growing the data cache, right? The lazy writer also monitor for the memory utilization, whether the available free memory available or if there is any memory pressure or anything. So these considerations, the lazy writer will keep invoke, uh, keep checking the memory utilization in the SQL server. So that either it will grow or it will cut down the memory. So cut down the memory by removing the pages from the data cache and it will write into the data file. So that is the thing that lazy writer does right any questions on this lazy writer is it clear the lazy writer yes okay cool thanks so mm -hmm. this is this is this is what it happens like um now, let's take one more uh, piece of information, right? Let's say this is the lazy writer and this is the, um, you know, so checkpoint and log writer, whatever we discussed, some uh, piece of information. Now, one more concept is, I was talking about the log file. This is the log file. Um, okay, let me add this. So this is, let's say, this is your, um, whatever the memory area, this is your log file, let's say. And operations that we are processing, right? So there, there are certain operations that we are processing, right? So some DML operations that we are executing and it generates the logs, like how the logs will be written to the log file is first it will write into the log cache. And once the log cache is full, like uh, there are certain conditions I mentioned, right? One is log cache is full or the transaction is committed or even checkpoint. Now, let's say, you have a huge transactions like the DML operations, whatever it is, and those all are very small transactions. Let's say uh, only one line transaction or very small transactions that you are executing, right? Small transactions which are immediately committing, right? So very small transactions which are com which are committed fre very frequent, like immediately committing. So the log cache size is sixty four KB, for example. It will not even wait for the 64. Every transaction will be committed, a small transaction, let's say one byte or two bytes, whatever, 10 bytes of transaction, it is committed immediately. If it is committed, it will keep writing into the log cache, uh, sorry, log file, right? So it will keep writing into the log file, then you will see IO, frequent IO operations, right? So if this is the case, to avoid that frequent small flash, 
small transaction. We have one configuration, but that is not even recommended. So I'll tell you why and what is that. And we have something called delayed durability. Database configuration, delayed durability. So what is durability is your acid properties, right? So I believe you all know like atomicity, consistency, isolation, and the durability, right? We have the acid properties and the last property in the acid is your durability, right? So durability is make sure that the transaction, what we are processing is writing into the transaction log file so that if there is any crash happens, then I should be able to recover my data without any data loss, right? So that is the reason we write into the transaction log file. <clears throat> now, if you enable the delayed durability, sorry, delayed durability, okay? So delayed durability. So what is delayed durability? That durability is nothing but writing into the transaction log file. We are delaying the durability uh, feature, right? So the reason we are delaying the durability of this to avoid small, small transactions to commit, right? So small, uh, not, not commit, small, e even small committed transactions writing into the log file. We are, we have some feature introduced by Microsoft starting from 2014 SQL and where it will delay durability. So whatever small transactions, immediately it will not int write into the log file. It will wait until this uh, complete log cache is full or the checkpoint triggered, right? So until the transaction is full, log cache is full or the checkpoint happens, they, the transactions will not write into the transaction log file. So what is the downside of that? So that is what dura delayed durability to avoid small transactions or small committed transaction writing into the log file. So what is the downside of that? Let's say you have a hundred transactions committed. Not written to the log file then what will happen if there is any crash happen? So the complete data loss, right? Whatever data we have in the log cache, it is temporary. It is a memory, right? So if the 100 transactions are committed, then whatever data that we have in the log cache will be flushed out, right? So you will not, uh, you would not be able to recover, right? So that is the reason it is not recommended, but it is worth noting right so you if you heard like something so this is this is something to know uh we have some feature but this is not recommended and i never say that people are using this delayed durability maybe there are some other reasons like why microsoft introduced but i don't see any reason for enabling this feature so a any questions Okay, so this is the delayed durability. And like lazy writer, we have something called eager writer. I don't know how many of you heard eager writer, right? So what it does, um, you know, so it checks that if there is any bulk operations that we perform, right? So with the bulk operation, if there is any modifications, that we are processing using the bulk operations, right? So if there is any bulk operation, like if the pages are modified by the bulk operation, let's say select star into or bulk insert, right? Those pages will be flushed from the data, uh, from the data cache to the data file using the eager writer, right? So the, I don't have much information like frequency and all, like I don't think it is also executing in a uh, certain frequency, but this is what, like if there is any bulk operations, it triggers that bulk operator, uh, eager writer, and it, it checks that bulk operation modified pages and it will write into the data file, right? So these are the concepts that we have. So any questions? So I'll so stop I, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to clear my understanding that um, the eager writer is triggered only when there's bulk operations. Like right. when it's bulk operation, that is when that 
for the background process, write the data data files or disk. Okay. That is correct. Say any questions. Yeah, uh, I have one question. Mm. Like, uh, to my understanding, uh, Daisy Writer will flush out both the dirty and clean pages. Mm. Correct. Yeah, and moreover, we don't have any, as a DBA, we don't have any control on uh, Daisy Writer, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. We don't have any. That's what, right? So, first, it is even removing the um dirty pages right so dirty pages is um is the current active pages so that is the reason it will validate whatever the least recently used pages right that algorithm so let's say you don't have any least recently used pages or you have a huge pages needs to be um you know so it needs uh memory to be placed like you know so whatever the pages available first um, you know, so first target is whatever pages which are not recently used, the lazy writer, the lazy writer responsibility. And it will also check that what are the uh, pages it requires, right? Let's say, for example, you have um, 10 GB of pages, 10 GB of uh, pages in the data cache. So mm -hmm. it will not remove all 10 GB, right? It will leave that. It will calculate some uh, free list. For example, the free list, it can be one gig or it can be two gig. Suppose if that is available, that should be enough for these operations to process. That free list, it will be calculated based on the least recently used algorithm. If it is, if it has this free list, right, so whatever the percentage, then it no need to remove the active pages from the, from the data cache or the memory. Okay. So that is the reason it is very rare. It will remove the uh, active or uh, dirty pages from the memory. Before it come to that point, it will check that what are the free list and how much, uh, how many pages we require to remove based on list uh, uh, LRU algorithm and it will remove the pages. Main motor is to free up the space, right? Correct. Correct. Free up the memory. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So anything new that you understood or in all all, you know. <laughs> so this is this is the basic architecture. So you must know all uh, every all I mean you must already know this architecture. Uh if anything new, good. Yeah, I did learn new things. Great. Yeah, I learned new things. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll I'll uh, stop for today. Like um, you know, so I don't want to start start a new topic and it will be um, bigger. Like you know, so I will uh, connect next week. Like we all know, right? Like a weekly twice, and uh, we'll connect next uh, week on the same days and same time. And yep, let's hope like we'll learn. Keep Can learning. I know uh, how many weeks uh, uh, this course was planned? um yeah so i to be frank like i never complete based on my plan right so the the reason i like to explain like things that you are uh you know so uh like internals and all right suppose it might go longer so the basic thing like that we were we were thinking like 40 hours as a minimum right so 40 hours as in like you can consider that two days uh two hours per day so likewise right so you can divide that into weeks but that is that is the minimum that we were thinking right so it depends on like you know what level we are going into so it might be longer <clears throat> okay so we can calculate weekly four hours right weekly four hours correct yeah that is that is uh the minimum what we were thinking but it might go uh longer as well but uh, one thing right so we all wanted to i i wanted to be clear and upfront with you and the performance tuning is not always a kind of you know so troubleshooting thing right so you need to know the theoretical internals at the same time the uh you know so the 
practical or whatever the live troubleshooting. So that is the reason. So I will uh, explain the theoretical, like for example, whatever we discussed is in architecture. Like say you want to understand the memory. Memory is not some something that you go ahead and troubleshoot like immediately, right? So you need to understand the concepts, the memory utilization. At the same time, let's say for example, there are weights. So what you will do weights, right? What you need to understand the weights, right? So you need to understand the theoretical and then you would be able to correlate whatever theory, theory into the internals and then go to the live troubleshooting, whatever that, right? So it is not like core or always on where you will directly jump into the, uh, you know, so the SQL server and do some uh, troubleshooting. No, so this is uh, mostly, like I would say, like mostly uh, theoretical things and we will go into the live troubleshooting concepts, right? So just, just wanted to make sure that you are aware, like, you know, so performance tuning is that. Yeah, yeah, yes. Because yeah. I'm... All agree. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Good night and have a nice day. See you. We'll... Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye.